Hello and welcome to this video. Today we have another unpacking video. This is the latest product from Gu Hightech. If you have any questions, you can contact the email service at guohedz.com. Okay, now, let's take a look. Wow, there's another layer of packaging in there. See the local logo VM of 171. There's a magnetic pack in the back. 100k Hz to Tugas reception frequency. The launch is from 160 meters in HF to 70 centimeters in UHF. That's a pretty big range. And then there's the kits and the exteriors and the electromagnetic pods. Then it can be controlled wirelessly by Bluetooth. When we play FT8, especially mobile phone this FT8 CM, you can use Bluetooth control to get rid of the cord. Then the real-time spectrum DSP digital noise reduction. Doppler tracking. It's a good dope to follow. Like when we were playing with this amateur satellite. This function is better. And then there are so many modes. FT8 USB LSBC WM FM or TT YDMR. This is optional. Now let's open it up and take a look at the fittings. The packaging is actually quite nice and delicate. Let's see what accessories we have first. Over here is a flash drive. Uh, instructions and software for domestic products. It's all on this flash drive. Take a look at the contents of this box. I got it. I really haven't opened it yet. This is hand microphone. There's also a hook in there. I think this hand is familiar. That's the one. Actually, it's the same as Yisu's. Lock this way. This is the light. There are two buttons on the side. Side PTT rear hooks. And then these numbers push buttons. That's fine, actually. This one's a little more mature, too. Also rich in functions. Then let's take a look at the second box. What's in this? Hey, there's nothing in the charger. It's 16.8 volts. Take a look at the third box. Well, this is a little heavy. If it's a little heavy, this must be the battery pack. Take a look at this battery. I got a rough idea. That's like a 5 amp tank capacity. This is the interface directly to the machine. Right next to this is the charging port. What's in that little box? Oh, one of these is power cords. Let's say, as the base station. Well, when the external lithium battery is connected, you can use this. This is USB. Well, this should be the data cable, because this machine has that virtual sound card. We connect to the computer to play FT8. Well, when you're communicating, well, a USB cable will do the trick. This new Type-C is handy as well, the one from our phone. As long as it's not a bad Type-C line. Can be universal, because some wires can only charge. Unable to transmit data. Have a look at what else. This is a joint, a power cable for docking. I think it was used on this. Yeah between the battery and the machine. Let's take a look at the mainframe first. And finally, the protagonist, this mainframe. Let's see the maximum input voltage of the USB interface is 5 volts. Our DC port input voltage is less than or equal to 13.8 volts. Antenna help with less than 2. Banning open circuit transmission means banning no antenna. Look at this from the side. It's a big hole. This heat dissipation is fine. But we should pay attention when we use it on rainy days. Because it's a knapsack station. That wouldn't be a problem with a rain pack. Same thing on the side and the interface in the back. There's a sign. This is the connector for the battery. This battery. Yes, the lithium battery can be plugged in. The DC port is the direct use of that switch. Power supply when used. And then this isn't. USB disk is supposed to upgrade the firmware. Where's the Type-C USB over here? Ah, I got a glimpse of it earlier. This is what you use when you connect to your computer. One is the control station. One is to send and receive audio. It's the equivalent of a USB cable. This is a wire connector on the bottom right. These are the ACC mounts. What about the functions of the other mounts? I'll look into it again. Let's look at the front. Heads. If you've noticed, if I cover this place up, it's not like one similar. Is it like the Q900 version? To the left of this is the numeric button on and off. On the right are the function keys. And this is the headphone jack. 
There are three ports on the left. The top port is 70 foot 520 amp. It's an antenna interface in the UV segment. Let's see what type it is. It's TNC interface. This down here, the short wave is universal. Yeah, just this regular portable radio. Piggyback station. A lot of it uses this VNC. This head is known as the Q9 head. The only thing this head doesn't do is feel wobbly, but not for size and portability. There's another one of these screws on the left. This place is grounded. There is also an XM GPS antenna expansion port on the left. This place on the right is an interface for the head. Now we'll just put the batteries on. Let's have a look at it. This is a 5 amp. You know, there's actually an alternative. Of course, with 10 watts of power on this machine, like we usually use is hand listening and communication. If you're out in the field for an afternoon, it's no problem. Let's see. There's a lock switch. Turn this on. On that side. Open it. In that case. After I put it in here, just hook it up on both sides. Same thing over here. See? It's hooked on both sides. Let's turn it on now. I wonder if this battery is dead. There's electricity. This is supposed to be a place to set up a call sign. The first time, you have to activate the confirmation. Which one to press? Check yes and then select. Okay, so that's activated. I think the resolution of this screen is okay. On the left are the other numeric keys in addition to the power button. This is definitely a band switch. See no band switching up. What about the Q900 before that? It's a lot easier with this wheel. Of course, this can also be chosen. It's also very convenient. This button must be a one frequency transmission. When you open this thing, it just sends and receives differently. Let's say we're chasing the station. Up is a difference of 1K. So are receiving frequency and are transmitting frequency. We're going to stagger 1K. And then this number button let me try a 14 dot. If you see that, it's 14 hertz. La, ah, 7 dot, that's a handy 7 amp. Well, on the right, these are function buttons. Well, all I know is this is the rule and this is the pattern. Ugh. This is the switch between A and B this DSP. And then there's the settings button. Long press and your A. There are a lot of features. This is something I'm going to have to work on. When you see the button, let's look at the screen again. It's an indication of signal strength. And down here is the SWR. What's next is the signal strength. And down here is the pattern. Down here is the spectrum and in the middle is the frequency. On the right is the voltage on the top. And GPS and Bluetooth. There are also some relevant displays such as time. I'm sure someone would say, that's when this battery is put on. The back interface is not working. In fact, some interfaces are usually not used. There's another one. Let's say we're on the field station. On the table, this battery can be removed and used. Take it off, pull it out, and people don't notice. First, when I was unpacking the box, there's one of these two headed lines. This line ends at this DC port. Then connect the other end to this charging port. It's also a discharge port. This one works both in and out. Look, the machine will turn on too. It's okay to see now. Let's measure the weight of the machine now. First test house. Close to 1.5. Test the battery. Yeah, a little over a kilo. It's like a kilo, altogether, half a kilogram. But the official figure is less than 2.4. I guess that's what I call it. It's been a long time, and it's not working. It's just a general reference. I asked Mr. BJTKH10 of the Go High Tech and used the short wave power meter. So I'm on high power for now. Well, to adjust the power, long press the power key. See here, L stands for low power, long press for high power. We'll just measure the high power. Well, if you want to set the power level, yes, just click and you can set it up. The one with 20 watts on it is the biggest. Let's see how much power it can reach. 
Well, 21, 20. That's a solid 20 over because of the batteries we use now. Now it shows. It showed 16 volts at launch. Let's test 7 amp. Well, when we were testing, it is recommended that you use CW mode or FM mode. So you don't have to whistle like this. It's 7 amp. FM mode is not high power pinch PTT. That's a little more power. 22 watts. Now I'm just going to test this UV segment. Let's see what the power is. And this head up here is called the TNC head. Well, there's a lot of converters on Taobao. I happen to have TNC at home, and then turn it into an M head or a BNC. Rotate according to everyone's needs. There's also this TNC antenna. I don't know if I can buy it. For the UV segment, you need to change the bead watch. Because this is short wave. Okay, the bead watch is hooked up. Well, now we're testing micro segments. Look at the frequency 147.500. Let's see what the power is. I also set it to high power. I always measure high power. A 17.2, a 17.17.1C. Well, 10 watts above the spec. The frequency is also accurate. You segment look at the power. A 9.5, 9.37 is also about 10 watts. No problem, because maybe the battery is low. Through the short wave and UV tests, that means the power on all bands is okay. The unpacking video of PM-A171 is introduced to you here. Thank you all guys.